All right, we're going to go ahead and get started um, in the interest of time. And, you know, as individuals continue to come in, this will be a recorded uh, session. So you will be able to find this presentation on our website. So if there's anything that is missed, someone will be able to go back and view our presentation. My name is Mrs. Martin. I am one of the counselors at Cheltenham High School um, and currently one of the acting counseling coordinators um, as well. I, my colleague, Mr. Bryant, is here. Mr. Bryant, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, Paul Bryant. Last names SB through Z for the most part and the alphabet. So Mr. Bryant and I will work together um, to help inform you as to what we should be doing right now. Um, we're at an exciting time where we're starting to think about what plans are going to look like after high school. And so we're going to begin to start guiding students um, in a more specific manner. We will be meeting with students um, towards the end of this semester for it in their English classes. So we'll be presenting the same presentation to students in their English classes um, towards the end of this semester, which is around the end of January. And then in the beginning of next semester for students who don't have English for the first semester, but have it for the second. So they'll be getting this information as well. However, again, they uh, if any students are looking forward to this information beforehand, they can, uh, they can view this presentation. Mr. Bryant will be answering questions. So please, as I go through the presentation, if you have any questions, put it in the chat and Mr. Bryant will answer them. Mr. Bryant, please feel free to jump in at any point if necessary uh, to answer any questions as well. So help, I'm a junior. What do I do? What does this look like? What are we supposed to be doing right now? What, should I, what shouldn't I be doing? Please help me. That's what we're here to do. So um, most of this information from this presentation comes from a step up to college. Um, but the material there is very helpful. Please feel free to Google and find step up to college if you're looking for additional information. There's a lot of gems um, in this um, edition. So this year, we will be kind of going through what should we be doing now, what should we be doing in the winter and fall, and then in the summer. I'm sorry, winter and spring and then in the summer. So right now we're just focusing on grades. The end, we've just finished the first marking period. We're now almost halfway into the second marking period um, of the first semester. And we should be focusing on grades. Of course, that's something you should do all year long, but um, this is the beginning of the last year that will go on a student's transcript that they will submit when they apply to college. Because we're gonna begin applying to colleges in the beginning of next school year. So their transcript is gonna show ninth through 11th grades. Now we will submit a senior transcript at the end of their senior year once they find a school, um, are accepted to the school, commit, et cetera. But the, app, the transcript that is going to be reviewed will be from grades nine through 11. The GPA will be from grades nine through 11. So this is a time to really kind of make sure that everyone has all their ducks in a row and are really focusing on grades to get there to show their highest potential. We have been having college reps coming in. I don't know if you've been getting my emails um, as well as Ms. Sutherland's emails, but every time a college representative comes to the school uh, to advertise and, and inform students about their colleges, uh, please, if there's one on the list that maybe you think you could be interested in or you definitely know you're interested in, or maybe you've never heard of it and you wanna know what the school is, please sign up for it. You can sign up for the college reps through Naviance um, or simply email your counselor if you need support with that and your counselor can help you with that. Um, and then, you know, SATs, we did take that in, in October. Uh, so the scores uh, were should have been available around December 11th. We haven't gotten the SAT scores of the PSAT scores back yet. However, they are available online and we'll talk about that a little bit later about how to access your score report. The other thing that students should be doing right now is just kind of going into Naviance. Naviance is a tool that um, works for just career planning altogether. Students can access the Naviance tool the same way that they can access PowerSchool or Canvas, which is through the student website. Um, and they do set up their own username and password. So if the, your student is unable to access the Naviance website, please um, re email, reach out to the counselor. We can reset it for them. And then that way they can 
enter it. But what they're going to do is kind of just work through different game plans, surveys, um, college searches, all of that. And again, we'll go a little bit more into that. Um, and then the other, the final thing that we should be doing right now is just kind of creating College Board ACT Khan Academy accounts, uh, because that will help with the SAT process, ACT process. And so that's kind of what we're doing right now. As we get into the spring, we should be doing a little bit more with the college search, such as attending open houses, maybe during spring break. That's a good time to set up a tour at a school. Um, you should be taking your SAT or ACT. And the first one, if you haven't already taken it, that's a good time to kind of get started. We, we do recommend taking more than taking it more than once. So that'll be that first time that you take it. Um, just and starting that college process, starting it through just kind of, you know, doing a preliminary search, just identifying colleges that you may be interested in, finding what major you may be interested in, uh, talk to your counselor if you need support with that, because we do have inventories that we can provide to kind of help you narrow down what it is that you think you may be doing. And then you just kind of want to start creating a list of all of that information because um, in the summertime, you want to actually start, you know, accessing college applications, registering again for your second SAT and kind of getting ready for that college application process that's going to start very early your senior year, like around September, October. Um, so as I mentioned, we've already taken the PSAT, which is a great practice, but right now what we're going to be doing is focusing on the SAT and the ACT. The PSAT scores, as I said, should be available, so you should have gotten an email. If not, you will get one soon with instructions on how to create a College Board account. I'm going to also show you a video that shows you how to do that and as um, access your scores, but um, you, you can go to psat.org slash my score. So the video will show you how to access... Congratulations on taking the PSAT and MSQT. When your scores are ready, they'll be posted at studentscores.collegeboard.org. To see your scores, sign in with a College Board account. No College Board account? Creating one is easy. Simply click sign up on the login page. Make sure you've entered all the required information and select next. Check to make sure your name, gender, and date of birth are all correct. Forgot your username or password, or not sure if you have an existing account? Click on forgot username or password and follow the instructions. If you have an account and don't see your scores, this might mean you have to update your account information. Click matching tool on the dashboard page. In the matching tool, click update. Re-enter your password and sign in again. Update any incorrect information and click update. Click continue to see your online score report. Still don't see your scores? Use the access code that was emailed to you on your score release day. Click get my scores in the matching tool and select I can supply my test information. Provide the information and enter the access code to get your scores. If you don't know your access code, your counselor may be able to provide it to you. If your scores aren't available on your state score release date, you'll get a message asking you to check back later. For more information, talk to your counselor and visit the College Board website. Congratulations again on taking an important step on the road to college. For more information on accessing your PSAT and MSQT scores, go to psat.org slash scoring. Next, watch Understanding Your PSAT and MSQT Score Report. Okay. Um, so uh, what we will do is kind of move on to, under, oh, sorry, <laughs> understanding your score report. 
Um, I'm just going to share that again. All right. Congratulations on taking the PSAT and MSQT. Uh oh, sorry. Give me one second. <laughs> They'll be posted at student score. There we go. All right, so the next video that we're gonna watch is what to do with your PSAT scores and it kind of just helps you understand your score report. Congratulations on taking the PSAT and MSQT. Now it's time to see your scores, which you can get on your phone or a computer. All right, we're gonna move on to the next um, slide and this will be that link. Mr. Brian, can you put that link in the um in the chat for me for some reason it's, it's showing the same um video thank you absolutely and something to remember to know i think miss martin's going to hit on this later on with the score reports and the common app and the sat your psat will be linked to your student's account so when you create an account with khan academy it will then set up practice activities to do based on your psat and then first your your first test score and then also what that means. Well, he just said this slide for me. <laughs> so essentially, um, that is exactly what we what, what that PSAT does. And then, um, you know, once you look at your score report, it kind of gives you an idea of where you stand. Taking the PSAT alone simply gives you that practice and helps you to improve your score for the SAT. So typically, just taking the PSAT just by itself gives you an average increase of about 60 points. And then if you uh, take your, if you do practice with Khan Academy and you set it up and link them all together, um, it, it does work on helping you increase your points even more. So if you put in just about six hours of practice time into the Khan Academy, that actually shows an average of an increase to 90 points um, from the PSAT to the SAT by doing both that in the six hours of practice. But if you put in even 20 hours of practice, that um, typically leads to an increase of, of 115 points uh, by the time you take your SAT. So it's really recommended to take that information that you've learned from the PSAT, use that um, to help guide you for with your studying to help you for the SAT. So how do you do that? How do you get to the Khan Academy? Essentially, you can go to satpractice.org. You link your accounts, as Mr. Bryant said, and it, it will help you then um, figure out what you need to practice on, what areas, and give you questions based off of your previous reports. Um, and then you just start to have your own personalized practice plan. So then once you do that and you're ready, now you can actually sign up for the test. And um, you have an option of either just taking the regular SAT reasoning test, which is evidence-based focused on reading math, reading and math. And there is an optional writing um, option for you. And it's scored on 200 to 800 points per uh, section. And so the SAT now costs $60. There are fee waivers available um, for students who are who do have a financial need. If you receive free and reduced lunch or if you have another financial hardship, please see your counselor so that your counselor can provide you with a fee waiver. Um, and that fee waiver gives you two free tests. If you want to take the SAT subject test, which some colleges do require two or more for admission. So it is important that as you do your college search, you look to see what uh, testing options they require. Um, then you can do that and you basically can take up to three tests on one date. And again, that is scored on a 200 to 800 point scale. That's an additional cost of, um, after the regular SAT cost. Um, right now with SAT optional, there are still so many schools that are allowing that SAT optional plan where they're not requiring SATs for admissions, but I want you to be aware of what that really means. And so as you do your college search, as you're re, you know, meeting with admissions reps and um, researching their websites, I want you to really look into what SAT optional really is. Some schools may say, you don't have to submit test scores at all. 
and there is no penalty for doing it. There could be a benefit for doing it if you have really great SAT scores, but if you don't submit them, there's no penalty. Some schools what may say, well, we will accept you without SAT scores, but we won't consider you for scholarship. And then there are some that say, well, we'll consider you for some of our scholarships, but then there are other scholarships like a presidential scholarship, for example. Um, there are some schools that will say you, we can't consider you for a presidential scholarship without that because they're looking at a full scale of what a student can you know, bring to their university when they're submitting their application. So it's really important to understand that as you decide if you're going to take the SAT, when you're going to take the SAT, um, because we don't want, I don't want you to just think that SAT optional means that that's not something that you have to worry about anymore. Uh, so if you do apply to a school that requires an SAT subject test, the subject test can be in either English, history, math, science, or the languages. An alternative to the SAT is an ACT. The ACT now costs $63 with a writing option, which would take it to $88. That the ACT is uh, more subject based um, and has, you know, a split of the reading and writing, but also science focused. So it is accepted by all four-year colleges and universities, just as the a ACT is. Um, it does may it does have writing. Um, which may exempt you from the need for an SAT subject test. So if you, there really is no rhyme or reason as to why someone may want to take an a ACT test over the SAT. I've had students who did both just to see which one they did better on, which one they wanted to submit to colleges. So it really just may depend on where you're applying, what they need. If you feel like um, a, the school is requiring an SAT subject test and you're like, I, I don't know if I want to do that, then you may want to opt for the ACT as well. And so just comparing the difference, as I said, there really sometimes can be no rhyme or reason between the two. Um, there, you know, just comparing the SAT versus the ACT. Um, the SAT has three required sessions, which is reading and writing and math. As I mentioned earlier, the essay is optional. Uh, some schools may want an, an essay, SAT, so make sure you are aware of which schools may want that or may not. Um, and then a perfect score is 1600. So you can score from 14 to uh, 400 to 1600 on the required sections of the test. You get about three hours. Um, and then if you do the essay, then you do have an additional 50 minutes to complete that essay. For the ACT, instead of three required sections, there's four. So again, as I mentioned earlier, you have that science section. So you have English, math, reading, and science. And then the writing section is also optional here. Um, and then their perfect score is a 36. So you can score anywhere from a one to a 36 in any of those four sections. So, one thing that um, most schools do is something called super scoring. Um, and essentially what that is, is as I mentioned earlier, we do recommend taking the SAT twice, so once in the spring of your junior year, and then again in either the summer or fall of your senior year. And a super score is basically taking your highest reading and writing and your highest math. So for example, if you scored a 400 on your reading um, the first time, and then you did really well on the math section. When you take it again, if you do better on the reading section and then uh, score maybe a 600, they're gonna take that um, 600 from your second test of the reading section, and then they'll take your highest math section and they'll combine it and that'll be your new score. And also um, as the slide shows, there's no penalty for wrong answers. So we usually recommend not leaving um, a question blank and just answering it because it may actually be the right answer. So you wanna take both of those tests as I mentioned, once in the spring, once in the fall. Uh, you know, Again, there. if you decide you're not sure which one you wanna do, you could take two, uh, you know, one SAT and one ACT in the spring, and then one SAT, one ACT in the fall, just to kind of compare where you stand. If you do need to take a subject test, we do recommend that you take it immediately after completing that course because then it's fresh in your brain. You kind of know exactly, you know, um, 
what you've learned, you remember it. And so we do recommend taking it at that time. So in the spring, our next upcoming dates are March, May, and June. You do the registrations typically like a month beforehand. So to register for the March 11th test, you do have to register by February 10th. You can actually register now. So if you feel like you may forget by then, please feel free to go register now um, for those dates of any of these three dates of March, May, and June. There are some anticipated dates that start in August for next school year. These are anticipated dates and have not been uh, fully confirmed, but this is just giving you an idea of when they may occur. So August through June of next year, these are the anticipated dates that, that they are expecting to hold the SAT. The SAT can be held at, most of the uh, SAT tests are held at Sheltonham High School. However, not every test is held at Sheltonham High School and just whether it is or isn't, a student isn't required to take it at Sheltonham High School. Uh, there are multiple testing sites in the area. So please don't feel discouraged if you don't see Sheltonham High School there when you go to register. They are, there are a certain number of tests that can be given at a certain date at each site. So some of the tests do fill up pretty quickly um, and so if there, if it's already filled at Sheltonham, please uh, register for a different test site that you can attend, that you can, you know, transportation or things like that are a factor. Upcoming ACT dates uh, are the ones coming up from after today are February, April, June, and July. And um, their deadlines are, again, about a month beforehand, a month and a few days. So please make note of those dates as well. You can find these dates uh, on the SAT website, which is the collegeboard.com uh, or .org. Either one links you to College Board's website or ACT.org. So in addition to SATs, again, we're, gonna trans we're going to submit transcripts. And in those transcripts, uh, we do have some schools may require GPA and class rank. We recently stopped use, utilizing class rank. So your transcript will show just GPA and the final grade of the course. So for example, prior to block scheduling, a student had the had four marking periods for a final grade. That is That final grade will be on the transcript. And now that we have block scheduling and there's two marking periods, it's still just the final grade that is on the transcript. And so if a student takes a, an enriched course or a course that does not have honors or um, AP level to it, then it's a it's a 4.0 scale. So they will be able to be, you know, their grade will be on a 4.0 scale. So an A is four points, a B is three, et cetera. Um, and then if they have honors or AP courses, then that scale goes up by one. So an honors is um, five, five point scale and an AP is a six point scale on the 4.0 scale. If, uh, so you additionally get a, additional weight on your grade because it is recognized that that course is more difficult. Um, so for example, if there's an English 10, um, sorry, English 11 class um, and then English 11 honors and then AP, we recognize that there's a difference in the um, rigor of those courses. So you get more points for the more rigorous course. Both weighted and unweighted GPAs are on a transcript. So it is still important to want to try to earn the best grade that you can because that it will be on your transcript. And right. and continuing with what Ms. Martin said, so when your student is eventually um, applying to schools and they're requesting your transcripts to be sent, that's something that we as counselors will send when they are applying to schools and they are they do want to show what they received on their act and their sat that has to be sent directly from college board or directly from act um, so something to consider either the first time you test or both time you test is that when you initially register college board will allow you to send it's like the first six or seven um score reports free um, to the number of schools that you've requested. Um, after that, I believe after you take the test, there may be a week window for you to go back in and add schools. But outside of that, 
then you will have to pay for each score report to be scored, uh, sent to a school. Um, so keep that in mind as you're making your list of schools or putting that in Aviance and you're taking the SATs, um, where are you looking to have those scores sent? So that way you're not paying for it on the back end to have them sent. The caveat to that is if you are, if you're, child or if you the student are looking to apply to schools possibly with the um, SAT optional process then you may want to decide at that time of taking the test do you want to put that school's name on that list because the school the score will be sent to them or do you want to wait and see what your score is so now that you've gotten like SATs out the way, you your grades are good and you are think now you're at a place where it's you're, it's time to start looking for different schools. How do you do that? Where do you go? What do you do? There are so many colleges um, and schools, uh, trades, all types of different educational institutions that you can look into. And so it can be pretty overwhelming. Um, and you may not know what area you want to go to. You may want to stay close to home. Um, you may have medical conditions where you need to be close to a hospital. There are so many different factors that you need to really look into. And so you can start basically by thinking about the top three uh parts of this decision, which is your the academics. Is the school a good academic fit for you? All right, do you wanna to go to a large school? And with that large school, are you gonna get the same level of academic support that you would get here at a smaller high school? And do you need that academic support? You know, so those are some things that you kinda of wanna look at. Do they have the major that you're looking at? Do you fit their academic profile? All of those things are kind of, you know, that starting point. Then you also want to look at social, like where do they fit in? Do you want to go to a, a smaller school in a rural area? Do you want to be in a big city? Can you survive a big city? You know, these are all, again, things that you want to think of. And these are things that you can look into when you do your school tours or um, when the schools come to, the, when the representatives come to us, you can ask those questions. Um, but then again, also financial, uh, is it a financial fit for you? Can you afford the school after scholarship or after um, loans and grants? Is it still something that you can fit, that you can financially afford? Um, you know, so you want to kind of, that's where you kind of start to just to get an idea of what schools you want to start looking at. And then once you kind of get that together and you're ready to start your applications, these are things that you're going to need to have that you want to start preparing for. So you want you're going to need standardized test scores. You're going to need the application form, which now is done through the Common App. The co most schools uh, participate with the Common App, and the Common App is like a one-stop shop. Back when I was applying to colleges in high school, we had paper applications, and I had to fill out an application for every school that I that I uh, applied to. Then it progressed to you can apply through their website. Now there's a, a common app where you can basically fill in most of the the demographic information, like the basic information, and can link your the schools that you're applying to to that application. And then you just kind of go in and fill out their specific information. But it's so much easier because it's one space that you're filling out everything. You go, you log into the Common App. You don't have to go to each school's website. Um, it's a lot more convenient than uh, back when I was doing it but I'm not going to tell my age, so we're going <laughs> to go on. Um, but also be aware that each school, whether you apply through the Common App or not, each school does have an application fee. And just as I mentioned for the SAT fee waiver, um, with for the SATs, there are fee waivers. There's, there's fee waivers for applications as well. So again, if your student receives free and reduced lunch, they do automatically qualify for an application fee waiver through the Common App. And so that would be something that they want to talk to their counselor about, and their counselor can connect them with that fee waiver. Additionally, you your student will more than likely need letters of recommendations. There are a few schools that don't require letters of recommendations, but most do require at least one to two letters of recommendations. So what we recommend is either getting a letter of recommendation from your 11th grade teachers. So start talking to teachers now, kind of making sure you're building that relationship with your teachers um, and starting to have that conversation with them of, 
will you be able to write a letter of recommendation for me next year when I start to apply to schools? Um, and there are some schools that do require a counselor letter of recommendation in addition to teacher letter of recommendations. And um, so you also want to be aware of what type of letter of recommendation the schools need and also talk to your counselor if there is a counselor letter of recommendation as required. Some schools require personal interviews not as much anymore, but there are still some. So make sure you're prepared, research the school, come you know, come to the interview prepared uh, for whatever questions they may have and also come prepared with questions. Questions that you can't really find the answer to on the internet. Something that shows that you're really dedicated and interested in that school. You'll need your high school transcript. We will give you a copy of that when that time comes for your own records, but high school transcripts are typically required to be official. So that'll be something that we send to schools and we'll get a little bit more into that once that application process begins. And then finally, you'll need an essay. There's typically like one common prompt. If you have English class already, you should have already started discussing the essay. You'll do that next semester if you have English next semester. Uh, but typically our English classes in 11th grade start to expose you to the essay, kind of get you thinking about the essay. And then in 12th grade, we, you know, the one of the required, uh, like assignments and requirements is to complete the essay. Um, so then that way you'll get some support. But if you have English next year as a second semester, we do also ad provide additional support outside of the classroom to assist you with your essay. If you have a relationship with an English teacher, please, whether that was ninth or 10th grade, still re reach out to that teacher for support as well. So as I mentioned, Naviance is like this place where you can do a search. You can access Naviance again through the, the Sheltonham.org website, the same place where you would access uh, Canvas or PowerSchool, you can access Naviance there. And Naviance is a web-based resource for students and parents. And essentially, that's how we communicate. We use Naviance to communicate with colleges. So you would link, if you do apply to colleges through the Common App, you kind of link your Common App to your Naviance, like syncing the two systems together. So then that way we can communicate with colleges as well through Naviance. But this is where you're going to request transcripts where you request letters of recommendations, where you do your college search. Like a lot of, Naviance is a great tool to start getting used to. And so essentially you want to start accessing it now. If you can't access it, access it again, contact your counselor. They will reset your password for you. But essentially it starts off with being your username, which is your year of graduation. So for you, it would be 23 a Martin, for example, first first initial of your first name and then your last name, whatever your username is for every other system would be the same one for Naviance and then your six digit school ID. But it does require you to change your password. Uh, so one common question for who should write my letters of recommendation. So if you are uh, in, in regards to like which teachers, so if I'm applying to a school and I'm looking at their um, computer science programming and I'm in a computer science programming course, maybe it might be worth asking that teacher to write your letter of recommendation and then maybe one of your other teachers or uh, whether it be English or, or math or science, but typically think of the program you're considering applying to thinking which classes most correlate with that and then starting with those teachers who have at least one of those letters of recommendation and then um going from there uh an, another thing that also happens which you will get more into um again when you know we present senior year is when you, common app has a section for letters of recommendation we do not use that you're only requesting letters through naviance um, especially for your teachers unless it's someone outside of the sheltonham organization so one just being particular who you're asking for your letters of recommendation from and making sure it correlates and then also making sure the requests are going through Naviance only. 
And if you have someone outside of the Cheltenham organization that you would like to have write your letter of recommendation, so say it's like maybe a religious leader or a coach or a mentor, someone from a previous school, for example, that's fine. It doesn't have to be a counselor or, um, well, counselors, yes, they have to be um, because that will be required from us. But if it is someone from uh, like a teacher from a previous school, it doesn't have to be a Cheltenham teacher. You can still do that, but what I want you to do is make sure you're aware that we can't, you don't request that through Naviance. You would request that, you would have them uh, submit their letter of recommendation on their own. So you would get maybe their your admissions reps email or a general uh, email for the admissions office, and you would have them send it to the school directly. We can't uh, oversee that, but that there is still an option to get a letter of recommendation from someone outside of Sheltonham. Um, and then, you know, again, so now that we're here and we're trying to start our college search, you don't know if you want a two-year or a four-year. You don't know if you want public or private. You don't know where you want to go. You don't know what schools offer the major that you're looking for. Essentially, you can find that in Naviance. You would click on, once you access Naviance, and, and then there's something called a super match and then an advanced college search. And a super match um, is essentially like a... Uh, one like a filter system. So if you ever shopped online and you want to find something by a certain color or size or something like that, you can do that in uh, Naviance. You would put in the location that you're interested in going to, the major that you're interested in um, applying to. Even you, it automatically inputs your GPA and your SAT scores to make sure that it's an academic fit for you. Uh, you could put in diversity that you may be looking for, social clubs, sports, et cetera. Anything that you could possibly think of that you may be interested in a school, you can input that information. And then once you hit search, it comes up with all the schools that have it. And it even tells you how much. So like if something meets 100% of your requirements, it will say that. But if it, ha if it say, for example, only has your major, but nothing else that you're really looking for, then it may just say something like five or 10%. So it's a really good place to start, especially if you're not sure of where you want to go or, you know, where area you want to be in or anything like that. Advanced college search is very similar, but with the advanced college search, you kind of already have an idea of what schools you're looking at. So you can put the name of the school in and then it gives you their demographics, like the class size, how you know the student to teacher ratio. It gives you uh, location, what other sports they're looking for, average SAT and um, GPA that they're looking for. But of course, that changes from year to year according to their profile of students that apply, but it does give you some general information. And then once you do that and you find, you start to add, kind of add schools to your list of schools that you're thinking of, you can actually keep that in Naviance. You would click on colleges that I'm thinking about, and you would then put those schools in there and that kind of keeps a record of the schools that you're interested in applying to. So when that time comes, you can actually just access that list. And if you're still not sure and, and you're thinking like, oh, I may be interested in, say, Penn State, for example, hey, Penn State is coming to Sheltonham next month. Then you can, you know, sign up for a college rep visit to talk to that representative to get a little bit more information. And you would do that essentially in Naviance as well, because you would click on college visits and it tells you a list of all the schools that are still scheduled to come to us. Um, and you also sign up for that college visit through that link. Once you input schools that you're interested in um, and you know the schools that you're thinking about, this is what this would look like. So for example, this individual was interested in Albany State, Bloomsburg, Drexel, and Penn State. So it shows like you can even put in here the deadlines. You hear where it has like the computer delivery type. CA stands for Common App. So if they have, if they uh, work with the Common App, that will be in there. If not, it, you would just say directly to the institution, which means that you, that you will eventually apply by using their website. So this is a really great tool to use to kind of just keep track of what it is that you're doing and what you're finding and what you're you're interested in. Another tool that is in um, Naviance that helps you kind of 
fit, narrow down some schools. Once you have those schools that you're thinking about, you can use a scattergram. A scattergram compares you with other students from Sheltonham School, uh, Sheltonham High School, who's applied to these schools over the last few years. And it compares where you stand with your GPA and SAT score. So if you see this individual where this blue person is, that is the individual who's applying to that school. The green checks and the boxes are individuals who have been accepted to the school. So this student seems to have about uh, about a three, a little, maybe a little over a three O GPA and about maybe a 1050 SAT score. So students with the green have they the closest one to them looks like maybe a little under a three five, maybe a three four GPA. Um and a very similar SAT score. So the student closest to them that's been accepted does have a bit of a higher GPA, um, and but a similar SAT score. The student closest to this individual who wasn't accepted looks like this person, which is probably about a 275, maybe 28 GPA with the same SAT score. So it kind of gives you an idea of where you stand compared to students who've been accepted and students who haven't been accepted. So that shouldn't be your only driving decision as to whether or not you'll apply to a school, but it gives you an idea of, is this a reach school? Is it a target school or is it a safe school? And so essentially a safe school is a school that you pretty much know you'll get accepted to because you're above their general requirements. A target school is kind of like right where you're at. You're applying to a school that's looking for an individual that has a GPA and SAT score very similar to where you stand. And then a reach school may be a school that may be a little bit higher, but you still have chances of being accepted. So this the scattergram, scattergram kind of gives you an idea of where you stand and what type of school it is for you. Another option, if the scattergram seemed a little bit to be a little bit too much for you, uh, because there are you know points and dots all over the place, you can use the college compare. And the college compare is basically the same information, but just written out in more chart form. So for example, when we looked at that previous screen, I wasn't really sure where that individual stood as far as GPA, et cetera. This kind of shows that the green check at that 3-1 GPA. Is, is good to go because um, that student has a 3-1 GPA. Bloomsburg is looking for someone, an individual with that similar GPA. But Albany State, for example, he's a little bit under with a 3-1-4. So does that mean you don't apply to the school because that that now is a reach school? Not necessarily because those SA, I'm sorry, those GPAs are very similar. So that still kind of brings it more to target. But Penn State, for example, who was looking for a 4.0 GPA, you see the red X, that lets you know that you're below, um, your GPA is below what they may be looking for. So that's good for you to know. And then if you move over to the combined SAT, uh, which would be that, that super score SAT, it kind of lets you know, do you have a green check or a red X? Where do you stand? Do you still want to apply to that school? Do you, uh, do you want to table that for now, et cetera? So this is just giving it to you in more chart form. All right, any questions? And Mr. Bryant, please feel free to hop in if there's anything that you feel like should be discussed as well. No questions so far, but just as you said earlier, <clears throat> as families are going through this process, making sure you're utilizing Naviance, making sure if you are um, keeping notes, whether it's on your phone or on the computer or a notebook, just because as this process keeps going, you're gonna see lots of schools, you're gonna have questions. And when it comes down to making a decision, you're gonna to have to bring all of that information together to make the best decision possible. Um, <clears throat> so just taking those opportunities, if we're going on vacation to Pop Poconos, see what schools are available and visiting. If we are downtown, Let's go check out Drexel's campus, which might be different than Temple's campus. Um, so much as Ms. Martin, as much as, Ms., so disagreeing with everything Ms. Martin said, just making sure every opportunity you're taking, just using it as a data point to put down. So it comes down to that final decision. You can make the best decision for you and your family. And as we mentioned already, we will have this presentation with juniors again and kind of explain this to them as well. Um, and then we will have another presentation once our juniors become seniors. And we will have a more uh, specific 
college application process presentation of like what to do, how to do it, when to do it. So um, this is just kind of introducing the process to you and just kind of letting you know that this is where you start. And we also understand that not every individual will, will go to college after high school as well. So we will have conversations with students about alternative plans. If you don't plan to go to college, do you plan to go to a trade school? Do you plan to get a job? Um, you know, do you, what do you want to do and how can we guide you? Do you want to go into the military? So those are conversations that we will have with the students as well. I think I see a question. I thought the district changed the scale to 4.5 for honors and five for AP. At this time, I believe the, the scale is still four, uh, five for honors and six for AP. Um, Mr. Bryan, are you aware of any changes maybe going through the board that, um, that changes that? No, I'm, I'm not aware of that. Yeah, I do believe that it is still uh, four points for uh, enriched, five for honors and six for AP. Is there a place we can find the breakdown of what grade is actually a 4.0 versus a 3.7? And yes, uh, so maybe we can take, uh, I'll try to find as we're talking, but in our, there is a report that kind of shows the difference in between honors, a regular course and AP, and you can see where and what percent um, falls. Let me see if I can find it and put it in our, our chat. Okay, so while you'll do it, while you're doing that, I'll still I'll answer the rest of these questions. How is Cheltenham supporting juniors and taking the SAT? So we did have last year uh, SAT prep process that we've been trying to bring in. We are um, looking into an option like that. We don't have anything solidified now. We really encourage students to um, practice through the Khan Academy, but also talking to their teachers if they have any concerns. So maybe if they find in a certain subject area that they're you know, really struggling, teachers are willing to support and providing resources and support for students in that subject area. How are counselors organizing their process to make sure that each student personal application is submitted with care, quality, and promptly with all requirements? So we, as um, counselors, we are required to meet with each one of our students. Um, so each one of our seniors, we track who we're meeting with and when we're meeting and how we're supporting them. So each, each counselor has their own process as to what that looks like. I can only speak to mine. So for example, I usually follow up with an email with the student just to kind of say, this is what you still need. Or, you know, if a student is well at uh, documenting what it is that they need, we do that. We, um, we schedule meetings with each individual, talk about what their plans are, help them, you know, help guide them through their processes and, um, and through their decisions. We provide support and recommendations, um, additional options that a student may not be thinking about. Um, but, and then we follow through with them. So it's not, it's, it's not always like a one-time meeting. There are multiple times we'll have a meeting with a student five, six, 20 times, whatever is necessary for that student to get their applications out and, um, you know, submitted in a, in a timely manner. Can parents be added to emails from counselors? So when we send out, uh, general emails to students, we use Naviance to, to hit every senior. Parents are included on that. So if you're not getting an email, please reach out to your student's counselor to let them know uh, that you have, you're not getting those emails and we'll make sure that we have the updated email for you because it is a little bit different than the power school system where we keep emails. And so if something has changed over the years or something like that, um, Naviance may not have been updated. So please make sure you reach out to your student's counselor. Um, if you're looking for something more specific, like you know, my my child um, is working through their working with their counselor through this process, and I would like to be included in that because I am, you know, supporting them as well. Please reach out to your counselor and ask for that, um, and I'm sure the counselor will be more than happy to include you. These are really good questions. Any more? Any other questions? We'll give it a few minutes. Otherwise, that is the end of our presentation. So thank you um, for attending. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to your student's counselor. You can reach out to myself. 
My name is Mrs. Martin. My email is amartin at sheltonham.org. Uh, but we will be more than happy to support you through this process. Have a good night. But we'll stick around for a few more moments in case there's any more questions. Mr. Bryant, did you find the information you were looking for? The original question, I put the link into the question, but it was a school profile. The school gotcha. profile has the uh, GPA versus grade point scale. Got it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. We will end here.